Tell me, do we do we have gays for Harris and trans for Harris? I don't know, probably so. But I know there's somebody we're probably leaving out. I don't know if there are peg-legged people for Harris, diabetics for Harris. Listen, it's hard to keep up. I, it's just a lot of foolishness, but this is just where we are. of this group they're called evangelicals for harris and yes they are sparking controversy among evangelicals now there's one evangelical in particular uh by the name of franklin graham yes relationship to the great late billy graham and so what i want to do now is i want to bring you guys up to speed the evangelicals for harris they are an affinity group and they've rallied together to show their support and to stand in solidarity with the harris waltz campaign now i am not sure why we are surprised at this right why the harris campaign has been giving all of us a a, a crash course in how to do identity politics and to do it the right way. And I mean, we got black women for Harris, black simps, I mean, black men for Harris. We have white women for Harris. We have white men for Harris. Um, Y'all tell me, do we, do we have gays for Harris and trans for Harris? I don't know, probably so. But I know there's somebody we're probably leaving out. I don't know if there are peg-legged people for Harris, diabetics for Harris. Listen, it's hard to keep up. I, it's just a lot of foolishness, but this is just where we are. Identity politics is the flavor of the day. So why would we be surprised that evangelicals for Harris is an affinity group that exists? They're jumping on the bandwagon. They're like, hey, well, we want some of the action too. Don't leave us out. Uh, but in any event, there's this group and they have caused some drama within the family, the actual family of the Billy Graham family. So what happened was the Evangelicals for Harris, they recently released this ad. And we're going to go and look at the ad a little bit. But they released this ad that used the likeness of Billy Graham, imagery of him, and um, I think a little bit of footage of him. And so Franklin Graham, the son of Billy Graham, he had this to say. So I want to go ahead and show you his tweet. Hopefully you guys can see it okay. But it says, the liberals are using anything and everything they can to promote candidate Harris. They even developed a political ad trying to use my father, Billy Graham's image. They're trying to mislead people. Maybe they don't know that my father appreciated the conservative values and policies of President Donald Trump in 2016. And if he were alive today, my father's views and opinions would not have changed. So this is the tweet where Franklin clapped back. And I'm actually going to show you guys. I've pulled an interview um, from The Hill, which surprisingly, you guys, I felt it was a very charitable and fair discourse um, just kind of analyzing this whole controversy with the evangelicals for Harris. And so the issue is the misrepresentation of Billy Graham's legacy, uh, the inherent contradictions of the Harris campaign with evangelical values. And so the evangelicals for Harris, they released the ad, they used his likeness. Franklin didn't like it very much. And he was going back and forth with them. And it just became this, this big thing. So, um, what I want to mention about this is, you know, you got to always give disclaimers. Um, I am aware and I understand that later in Billy Graham's life, um, that there was some information that came out uh, about some, you know, maybe some wonky theological positions that he held. And I just want to be clear, this video is not aimed to adjudicate that matter, nor is it an endorsement of Billy Graham or Franklin Graham or the Graham organization. That's, that's not what this is about. Um, but I do, however, I do want to point out that Franklin Graham, as his son, is not pleased with the Harris campaign. And he is believed, uh, according to his belief, he believes they're trying to hijack um, Billy Graham's evangelical gospel message because, I don't know, 
he definitely is not convinced considering the DNC uh, is known as the party of atheism, right? They're anti-God. They're, they're not interested in protecting religious liberty, and they don't promote policy that would otherwise uphold uh, or that a Christian would uphold and support. And so I guess Franklin's issue, I don't know who y'all think y'all fooling, but nobody believes this. But anyway, let's go ahead. I want to look at some commentary um, that I've pulled from the Hill on this issue. And I think you guys are going to find this coverage very interesting. So let's go ahead and take a look. You may have heard of white women for Kamala, black women for Kamala, white dudes for Harris, Haley voters for Harris, or even cat ladies for Harris. But have you heard of evangelicals for Harris? It's a real thing and it's causing quite a stir. Part of the reason for the internet uproar is that the group used footage of the late Reverend Billy Graham in an ad supporting Harris. For context, Graham was hailed as, quote, America's pastor and the pastor to presidents, working with leaders like Harry Truman, George W. Bush, Ronald Reagan, and Jimmy Carter. Here's a look at what that ad featured. And said, Lord, I have sinned. I'm sorry for my sin. I'm willing to change my way of life. Have you ever asked God for forgiveness? That's a tough question. I'm not sure I have. I just, I don't bring God into that picture. I don't. His son, Reverend Franklin Graham, criticized the group for using his father's image and took to Twitter to say, quote, the liberals are using anything and everything they can to promote candidate Harris. They even developed a political ad trying to use my father, Billy Graham's image. They are trying to mislead people. Maybe they don't know that my father appreciated the conservative values and policies of President Donald Trump in 2016. And if he were alive today, my father's views and opinions would not have changed. To which Evangelicals for Harris responded, quote, the issue, Franklin, is that in your worship of Trump, you have forsaken the gospel. We are voting for Harris, but we only worship Jesus. Remember the calling to which you were called. And this is how MSNBC's Joy Reid reacted to the drama. Let's watch. They're not alone in tiring of his act. A separate group, Christians for Kamala, had a Zoom meeting last night that included leaders from several progressive Christian groups, urging supporters to get behind Harris and Walls. Call it divine intervention? Or perhaps lots of Christians are just getting fed up with being associated with the hateful vision of Donald Trump, his Bible stunts and religious hypocrisy, and are fighting back with a counter narrative to conservative evangelicals' overwhelming support for Trump. These groups say the conversation on faith and spirituality has been hijacked by the Christian right. All right, so I want to go ahead and I want to stop it right there um, because I think we need to deal, we need to deal with a few of the assertions that were made there. And what I've learned in, in, in all of these discussions around politics is to just take a step back and to really think through what people are saying and to literally analyze and meditate on what they're saying in light of what the scriptures teach and, and what God has revealed in his word. So the first thing I wanted to point out was that in that statement, after Franklin Graham said what he had to say was Franklin Graham was accused of worshiping Trump. I hope you guys caught that. And I find that interesting. I find it interesting that these evangelicals for Harris are able to conflate supporting the policies of one candidate over the other. To them, they are calling that worship. And so I don't want you guys, don't fall for that trick. Be prepared for people who don't have a leg to stand on concerning policy. Try to conflate support of policy with worship of the candidate. They're doing that on purpose. And the entire goal of making inflammatory and disingenuous statements like that, they're doing that because they want to guilt you and shame you into disavowing your support for the obvious political platform, which is policies that are closer aligned with our Christian 
worldview. Do not fall for the trick. Let me make sure I've been clear in the way that I've communicated that. Because I know some of you, y'all are filtering this through. Like I say A, and when it filters through here, you heard elemental P, okay? A is they are asserting that Franklin Graham's support for one political candidate over the other on the basis of policy, instead of them dealing in proper categories, they conflate the category of policy with the man worship of Trump disavowing or, or, or ignoring the fact that there is a reason why one candidate is preferred over the other, not on the basis of who they are and who they like and how they act. This is a policy discussion. And so the reason why they have to throw that monkey wrench in there, because the argument is, how can you as a Christian support someone who's cheating on his wife repeatedly? How can you support someone that's this felon according to all of these different courts and jurisdictions? This is the argument that they're trying to make. Now, mind you, most people who make this argument, most people, they don't acknowledge the lawfare that was weaponed against this candidate. And people who also engage in this discussion are also on the other side, not fair and honest. What do I mean? Christians, you don't need to shark back from the fact. That Donald Trump is not a believer, nor do you have to try to usher him into the kingdom and say, well, kind of little bit, like if you tilt your head to the side and kind of wink like this, he kind of looks like he's no, you, you ain't got to do none of that. You don't have to do any of that. You should be able to objectively stand there and say, yeah, I mean, he's really shown no fruit in keeping with repentance. He said in 2015, by his own admission, that I've never even given thought to the the concept of repentance, right? Like, I don't, I don't do anything wrong. What's this repentance thing you speak of, right? Like, be honest. Do not shy away from these obvious glaring issues. They are what they are. But you also, also need to engage honestly and say, I am not, we're not, I'm not voting. He's not on the elder board, right? The qualifications for elder, pastor, bishop, there come, there's a lofty qualification for that. This, this is a separate issue, separate issue. Would it be nice, right, to have two candidates and just saved and filled with the Holy Ghost? That would be nice, but that's not what we have. We've never had that. So let's not act as if that's ever been an option in this country. And we've just been so blessed, right, that we've had leaders that worship and honor God and bow the knee. We wouldn't be where we are as a country if that was the case. So we got to deal in the reality without compromising your Christian conviction. You can say, I would want nothing more than for Donald Trump to bow the knee, to repent of his sin and to place his faith in Christ alone for his salvation. His eternal, his eternal soul matters to me. I would want nothing more. Then for Kamala Harris to repent of her sin and to place her faith in Christ alone for the remission of her sin. That would be a beautiful thing. And if both of those individuals did that, that'd be my brother and my sister in the Lord, right? By the spirit of adoption. I would welcome and celebrate that. The angels be celebrating, everybody be celebrating, but that's not what we have here. So do not fall for that trick. What you need to do is you need to be ready to give a reasoned defense, as 1 Peter 3 tells us, admonishing us to honor Christ and Lord as your heart first. And doing that means be honest about Trump. One, it ain't even about Trump, but you can be honest about him. And this isn't necessarily even about Kamala, but we need to be honest about her too. This is a policy platform discussion, which one party cannot defend or reconcile with the Christian worldview. So instead... They want to tie you, the Christian, to the candidate who no one is arguing is a believer. I've said it plenty of times on this platform. Do I like Trump's policies? Absolutely. Yes. He is the one that I believe will preserve my Christian liberties to practice my faith, to get the heck out of my way, to mind his business, leave me alone, 
improve this economy, support my freedom to educate my children and to raise them as I see fit, and to be a fearless defender of liberty, right? Actual justice in a sovereign nation that is feared by its enemies and respected by its allies. I love that. Do I believe he is a Christian savior or some messianic figure? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And anyone that you hear saying something like that, you should be concerned. Do I take issue with aspects of his personality? I mean, listen, if I was overly sensitive and, and you know, uh, unable to think in proper categories, I might. I might, but listen, I got a man at home. I don't need the president of the United States. I don't need to look to him and be like, oh, he's just so good. I don't, I don't, I don't need that. I, I need him to just do his job, right? I need him to do his job. But to be, to be honest, y'all know me. I kind of like aggressive masculine men and they don't scare me. So in all fairness, I don't care about that in the sense that. He is who he is. There are plenty of people who are supporting Kamala, and she's weird to me. She's weird in the way she communicates and cackles, but that's who she is, and they love her for that. But at the end of the day, this is not a, a beauty pageant or, or a popularity contest. This is fighting for the, the, the future of this nation as we know it, trying to starve off the enemies within, not out there. I mean, we got some enemies out there, but right now we're fighting against ourselves, right? We're, we're, we're on the brink of a national divorce. And so for that reason, the aggressive masculine man who's narcissistic, I don't even like narcissists like that, but I, I'm, I'm not in a romantic relationship with Trump, right? Like he's not my baby daddy, OK, like I don't have to chase behind him for child support and have this this close connection with him. It's just it's just not that um, I'm not on the search committee, you know, for the pastor of the church. And he's one of the candidates. It's that's not it. I already have a pastor. I have an elder. This is a job interview. And out of all of the candidates that have applied for the job. Me and the rest of the search committee, that's y'all out there. We are left to choose between him and what we thought would have been Joe Biden. But since the Democrats, they just kind of bypassed democracy and stole that opportunity from our Democrat uh, uh, patriots, we, we were given Kamala. So those are your choices. You ain't got to like it. You don't have to be in love with either one of them, but this is where we are. So I need you to be an adult, be mature, and understand what your assignment is. We don't have to love Trump, right? I don't have to love him. Well, yeah, I love my enemies. I do. But meaning, and I'm talking about like in an affectionate kind of way, even though I kind of do. The point I'm making is I respect the fact that man took a bullet for the rest of us who are out here fighting against the overt wickedness that they are trying to shove down our throats. And right now, he's the one that is actively pushing back against the bastion of communism that these godless goons are trying to force us to live under. That's where I am. But you need to pay attention to what they are trying to do with that tweet, right? What they're trying to do with that tweet, do not fall for that because they are accusing Franklin of man worship, which is possible. I've seen some folks worship Trump and I'm like, you, you need some help. You need some help. But my question is, is that a fair characterization of why Franklin has thrown his support behind Trump? No, I don't believe it is. Not saying it can't happen, but I don't believe that's what's at work here. So then, then they go on to say, they go on to say that they are voting for Harris, but they only worship Jesus. Did y'all see that? Now I'm arguing that that's a lie. As I call cap lies, lots of lies. And here's the reason why it might be a Jesus. It might be a Jesus, right? Some Jesus Christ like figure, but it is not the Jesus of the Bible. And how do we know? We know this because we are told in scripture that there are false Christ, right? That exist. They're just going to rise up, right? And, and a false Christ implies that it is not the Christ. So you have 
Jesus Christ of Nazareth, son of the living God, God incarnate, right? Who dwelled among us and we all, we beheld his glory. And then you've got the false Christ and there are m multiple of those, right? So we see, where is it? We see in Mark, Mark 13, Mark 13, verse 22, it tells us, and then if anyone says to you, look, here's the Christ, right? Or look, there he is. Do not believe it. And then it explains why you should not do that for false Christ and false prophets will arise and perform signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, the elect. But be on guard. I have told you all these things beforehand. So basically, Jesus is giving us a warning, right? He's giving us the warning and he's telling us, listen, it's going to come. And I'm not saying that the evangelicals for Harris are pointing to Kamala as a Christ. I'm being fair in my dealings here. That's not what I'm saying. The, the argument that I am making is that there is a presence of false Christ because we know there's a true Christ. So you got one that's real and then you have one that's a counterfeit. And these counterfeit Christ, they may not be pointing and saying that person right there is a Christ, but by virtue of what the Jesus they claim they're following, well, what does that Jesus affirm? What does that Jesus teach? If the Jesus they affirm and the Jesus that they're talking about is teaching something different than what's recorded in Holy Writ. That's a false Christ. Jesus gave us the warning just because someone speaks Christianese and uses lots of biblical language. It doesn't mean that they represent Jesus in the kingdom of God. That's not what it means at all. Those who represent the kingdom of God, they come preaching the same message that Jesus preached when he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay. Like that's the same message. The message doesn't change. It doesn't get reinvented. It's the same message. These people with this Jesus, they don't preach the gospel of repentance of sin and faith in Christ alone. No, they come preaching the gospel of tolerance and acceptance and, and hatred disguised as love. Right. And then, then their deception, according to the scripture, it will be so strong that the text says that if it were possible, they could lead the elect astray. Not that it is possible, but that their deception would be so pervasive and so vast that even the elect might give a listening ear to the foolishness coming out of these people's mouths. So what they're trying to do here, they want to tell Graham you know, remember the calling to which you were called, Franklin, right? Now, I agree. It's a wonderful thing for shepherds to be reminded of what they should be doing. And I thought it was funny yet disingenuous coming from these people. But just like the cunning and crafty serpent, they have a nerve to try to tell Franklin about the Lord's grace, right? And how it's always ready to receive him as if he's on the wrong side of this policy dichotomy discussion. No, that's not the case at all. But you can see how crafty they're being by saying, you know, whenever you're ready to come to your senses, whenever you're ready to join us on the side of love and tolerance and, 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 and charity, you come over here, we'll be waiting for you. We'll be waiting for you. Is there one?